I get a ton of requests on how I curl my hair so I thought I would film an updated tutorial. The last one I filmed was in 2016. Not much has changed but I'm going to just do an updated tutorial and then just show you how I quickly throw my hair into this stylish ponytail. The majority of the requests for this look came from Instagram so come follow me outside of YouTube over there at Show Me Makeup. So after washing my hair with the Redken ABC and the Olaplex conditioner, I've applied some of the Olaplex number no. 6 and number no. 7 and as always I've applied my Anti-Snap by Redken. So then I just give my hair a blow dry on a cool to medium heat and I just use a brush to smooth out the cuticles. To start this tutorial I always part my hair ear to ear and then I work with that bottom section. So I give it a brush through. My favourite brush is still the Demon Tangle Teaser brush. I've used one of these for 17 years. It's definitely my favourite type of brush. Now I want to go in with some of the GHD Curly Ever After Curl Hold Spray. Not only is this a heat protectant, it's got conditioning agents and it just helps to hold the hair for longer. If your hair really struggles to hold the shape, you might want to try a product called Plea by L'Oreal. It's my favourite product for adding kind of like memory to the hair so it remembers to hold the shape for longer. It's a setting lotion that's activated by heat. The tongue I'm using today is by T3. This is a single pass curl 1.25 inch, which is 32 mil, which you know I absolutely love. It's got five heat settings and I really like the way it turns on and that you can cycle through each of the settings. With each section that I take down from the top, I tend to separate into three sections on each side. So a total of six. And I usually start with the middle section and I like to curl that towards the face. With each curl, I usually do a twisting technique. This is something I've always done for as long as I can remember because for me, it creates the most long lasting spiral curl. So just to show you again, as it goes around the bottom of the barrel, I twist the hair and then wrap. So I twist and wrap, twist and wrap all the way around and then just make sure to leave out around about an inch of the hair at the very end, even just half an inch. Usually my preference is to use the Babyliss Dialer Heat. I do still use that, but I really like this one by T3. But with both of those tongs, I never really use the clamp. I do tend to sort of like pat it onto the hair. As they both tend to leave an indentation on the hair, I will very lightly allow the clamp to pat the hair, but I tend to rotate the tongue as I do this so that it doesn't leave an indentation. And I only do this so that it smooths the hair on the outside as well as the inside. With the front section, this time we are curling away from the face. So each time we curl a section, it's an alternate direction to the previous one. I don't have coarse hair, nor do I have fine hair. I have a medium density, medium in diameter. So I tend to have mine on the medium setting. When I take it out, I tend to do this bouncing technique with my hand. And the reason for that is because I don't want it to set too curly. If you want it to be more curled, you can create a pin curl while it cools. And similarly, if you want it less curly, you hold the very end of the curl and pull it outwards and then just bounce the hair up and down and it will cool in a slightly softer curl. If you go onto my hair tutorial playlist, you'll be able to see all of these looks, how I'm describing them because I've done tutorials for each of them. Today's preference is more of just like a loose spiral. Because I have used the GHD Curly Ever After, it will hold its shape a lot better than if I didn't use it. So as you can see, we've done three sections and I've rotated the direction of each curl. The front ones go back, the middle ones come forward, and then the ones at the back also rotate away from the face. So now I'm going to take down a new section of hair ear to ear. And again, I'm going to work this in three individual sections on both sides. So six sections in total. This is my preference in terms of thickness. However, depending on your density and also how many curls you want, you can do this in more sections if you want tighter curls or if you want more of them. If you want more of a blowout look as if it's been blow dried that way, then do bigger sections. As I said earlier, the spiral technique I find enables the curls to stay for longer. If you was to completely wrap the curl around the iron with no twist, you'd get more of a traditional lock curl, which I describe as a bit like the Cowardly Lion curls. So the best way to learn how to do this is before you plug your curling iron in, just practice wrapping the hair around it while it's cold. And then that way you're not going to kind of like ruin your hair while you're getting the technique down. You won't burn it or anything. So just practice wrapping it around and twisting, wrap, twist, wrap. And then once you've got the technique, you can then try it while it's hot. I'd also practice while it's cold, allowing the clamp to come down on the hair and rotate in the iron in a 360 direction so that you can smooth the outside of the curls. 
Just don't allow it to sit on the hair for too long. As I said, it will leave an indentation. As you can see, just for ease, I am holding the curling iron above my head and usually kind of holding it more in a vertical position. But if you want more volume, you can hold it more horizontal to the head so that you get more lift at the root. Usually your arms would be in front of your face when you're doing this, but obviously for this tutorial so that you can see everything, I'm actually finding it easier to hold it vertically above my head. You will have noticed I've just taken out the small section of fringe at the front. These are my short bits. These are always the sections that don't really tend to grow very much. And I think it's just a little bit of a safer option for me to leave those out. And I do them at the last moment. I either wrap it really quick and take them out really quick, or I turn the curling iron off before I wrap it around. Where these strands tend to be a lot thinner, they take really quick. They definitely don't need as much heat, so I tend to wrap it over the clamp. The clamp always doesn't seem to be quite as hot as the barrel, so I wrap it around and then I just pull the whole barrel down through the length and it just adds a little bit of shape to that thin hair. I'm now on the last section of hair, which I tend to do on a center parting, but I will always throw my hair over to a side parting. However, I feel like this on a center parting enables me to get more volume when I throw my hair over. As I've done with every section, I've applied some curly ever after before I go in with my curling tong. Up until now, all the back sections I've pulled slightly forward to curl, whereas this top section at the back where the crown of my hair is, I'm holding the barrel more horizontal and curling it backwards away from the face to give more lift to the root. If like me, your front sections are slightly shorter, again, leave them out until the last moment. Just continue with the rest of the hair rotating the direction until you reach the fringe. And the reason I rotate the hair is because it means the curls don't all lock together. When you shake it out, they tend to sit in their own space and it creates a lot more volume to your hair. That is why I created that specific technique with my heatless curls because I wanted loads of volume, but without the heat. So here I'm just going in around my fringe. I'm not letting it sit on the barrel as long. I'm dragging the barrel down the whole length so that it's not too curly, but it adds some shape. And it's up to you if you want to open the clamp, if you want a little bit more heat. Usually this is better if you've got more coarse hair because you will need a little bit more heat. Next I'm going in with a really wide tooth comb. I've had this one for years. I couldn't even tell you where it came from. And I'm gonna use that to separate all the curls. You can just use your fingers, but this is a little bit easier. This isn't actually a step I usually do. I always just give my hair a shake out, but sometimes I want a little bit of a smoother finish, a little bit softer. So that's why I'm combing through it because it is a little bit different to my last tutorial. So just go through your curls with your fingers, give it a little shake out and just separate them. As you can see, we've got that beautiful loose kind of spiral curl. Then I'm gonna go in with this Live Proof Full Dry Volume Texture Spray. For my heatless method, I really love the Dry Oil by Bumble One Bumble. But today I'm gonna to use this one to give it a really good shake, lift the curls up and just give them a spray. This is gonna add more volume and again, dry texture, which means the curls will sit a bit more separate, giving you more volume. It'll also work a little bit like a hairspray, so it'll help hold them. I really love voluminous, messy hair. If you want it completely smooth, finish off with a shine spray. Now, just to show you how I create my ponytail, I literally just lift it up in one go. I do not fiddle with it. I do not try to make it neater. The first time you pick it up is gonna be the one you get with the most volume. So use one hand to hold it in place and then just pull some tendrils down at the front. You can see I'm holding it really loosely. And then I'm just taking an ordinary toggle and I'm only gonna wrap it twice because this one is quite a tight toggle. And I'm being really careful how I pull it through so I do not disturb the volume on top. So I'm holding it in place and then using the other hand to pull the hair through. Now when you pull the pony, pull the very outer edges but also the very center. And you can see we've got this really nice lift to the root and we want the pony to stay where it's sat at the moment because as the day goes on it can get a little bit baggy so we're going to take a metal butterfly clip which is really small and i'm placing that underneath the toggle and this prevents the hair and the toggle from becoming limp throughout the day then all you want to do is tweak your actual ponytail so you can lift it up you can apply some more dry volume i usually find this is a really good hair to wear the following day when your hair starts to look a little bit more messy I think it's a really sexy style. It's kind of effortless looking. I love that it's on a slight side parting, but we've got lots of volume at the crown of the head. You can of course comb through the pony if you want it to be more sleek, and you can brush the sides with a comb and some hairspray if you want a more sleek finish. 
So that completes today's hair tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I will list and link all the products I've used and recommended in the description bar. If you missed my bronze smoke for hooded eyes, I will link it on screen for you now. Don't forget to come follow me outside of YouTube over on Instagram at Makeup, and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.